Hello, hello and welcome to prayers and thoughts from All Saints Church in Small Heath on Wednesday morning. I'm glad you're able to join me today. Well, I wonder how uh, you're feeling today, this morning. We heard um, further news from the government, from the Prime Minister uh, on Sunday evening about the state of the lockdown and where we're going as a country in regards to the uh, preventative measures that are in place. I guess for some of us it's uh, fairly inevitable that things will continue in much the same way, although there is a plan in place now which is uh, a positive thing I think. But for others, well, I think the fact that the lockdown continues and to have that reinforced will most definitely be a source of anxiety. So wherever you happen to find yourself with that today, I um, would like to share a reflection with you uh, from Cardinal Newman. It's a meditation on providence. My God, you have created me to do some definite service. You have given some definite work to me, which has been given to no other. I have my place in your plan. I may never know what it is in this life, but I will be told in the next. Therefore, I trust you in all things. If I am sick, my sickness may serve you. If I am worried, my worry may serve you. If I am in sorrow, my sorrow may serve you. You do nothing in vain. You know what you are doing. You may take away my friends. You may put me among strangers. You may make me feel forgotten. You may make my spirit sink. You may hide my future from me. Still you know what you are doing and I trust you. Well, I've perched um, in this corner of the garden today because I wanted to share with you my um, alliums here, uh, which for those of you who um, aren't so interested in gardening, this is a, a member of the um, um, garlic family, I, I think. Um, and I'm pretty proud, I'm particularly proud of these, um, not because they're um, doing a a nice display here, or starting to um, provide a nice display, um, not because they're particularly complicated to grow, but because I bought them from the supermarket at the end of last year, when the bulbs were being discounted, and um, I think there's probably about a pound's worth here, uh, which I think uh, is, is pretty good going really, so I'm quite pleased with these, and um, I think for a pound, um, I think they're a bit of a bargain. But today I want to take you um, not really to my uh, garden uh, here in Small Heath. I want to take you a bit further afield today. I want to take you to a little town in the Pyrenees in France, a little town called Lourdes. Now I know that some people from our church have been to Lourdes on pilgrimage in the past because I've seen the photographs and I know there are one or two people who are keen for us to go back. Well, um, France is only uh, a couple of hours away from Birmingham, uh, from Birmingham Airport. So, you know, I, I think that could be, that could be something we could do in the next year or two. And um, that should be fairly straightforward to, to organise. So let's, let's uh, think a little bit further about that when we're um, back into a, a routine of sorts. But um, Lourdes, is a, a shrine it's a it's a it's a shrine town um, and i've been there in the middle of the summer when it's in pilgrimage season when there are beautiful candlelit processions and thousands of thousands of people when there's a, a really electric atmosphere people go there on pilgrimage um, it's a place of healing as well there's a uh, there's a holy water um, spring there and um, it's, it's a very, very busy and popular place in the summer and people go there faithfully year after year. I've also been there in the middle of the winter 
uh, as well um, with friends who live not so far um, it, not so far from, from, from the town itself. And in the winter, although there aren't thousands and thousands of people there, there's still a, a really special um, atmosphere about the place. The town is absolutely full of shops selling religious paraphernalia. If you can picture Carolyn's piety stall uh, in the church, you imagine sort of 10, 20, a thousand times more rosaries and um, luminous statues and goodness knows what it's, it, it, there are all those things there, but nevertheless there's a really beautiful, holy um, feeling about, about Lourdes, particularly um, in, in the churches and the chapels there, and there are a number of those. And um, so today, um, if you're watching this, you're able to access the internet. So today I'd say, um, please, please do go away and um, find out a little bit more about Lourdes, particularly if you fancy a pilgrimage to uh, France in a year or two, we can, we can, we can do that. But um, the reason that um, Lourdes is, is, a, is a religious uh, site in the first place is because of uh, a saint, Saint Bernadette. Saint Bernadette lived there with her family, um, and uh, you can see all the different places that she lived. Actually, her, she was brought up in a in a in a mill um, from memory. That's in the centre of the town, um, and uh, she herself experienced um, uh, illness through a pandemic, which I think was cholera. I'm not 100% sure, but you can you can do some research on her later. Um, but she she uh, experienced a, a disease, as did people at that time, and mid 19th century, mid 1800s, um, there in in France, and uh, she never really recovered from the illness. She was um, what people used to call lame um, for the rest of her life. But she was a very holy woman, a very holy young girl and later uh, woman, and um, she experienced 18 um, apparitions of the Virgin Mary, and in one of them um, she saw the, the Virgin dressed in, in blue and white um, with, a, with, a, with a, a blue sash, and uh, there was another experience where she um, dug the ground with a hand and, and water um, appeared and so it's a very very beautiful um, a story her, her life is a very very uh, it's a very beautiful account and she had some very striking um, apparitions of Mary and so people uh, go to um, Lourdes seeking um, now healing and to experience some of the holiness of that place and to experience um, some of the um, places where Bernadette lived. Um, you can visit the uh, parish church there where she was baptised and it's all um, within, a, within a, a short walking distance and it's a, as I say, a very, very special place. So today, um, well, May being the month of Mary, um, today I thought we would um, have some uh, morning prayers from this book, which is the Lord's pilgrimage book, um, which I have kept from um, the pilgrimages that I've been on to the, the shrine there. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will praise you, my God, and bless your name forever. Every day I will call on you, and bless your name forever. Great is the Lord, and worthy of all praise. I will declare your greatness, Lord, and bless your name forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. So a reading from Lamentations. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases, his mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly 
for the salvation of the Lord. And so a prayer of morning offering. Loving God, I thank you for forgiving me life and for bringing me safely to this new day. Be with me as I go about my daily tasks. I offer to you today all my thoughts, words and actions for your service. Use me to bring your healing touch, your smile of friendship, your word of encouragement and your helping hand. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. An act of trust. Lord, without you I am nothing, but with your grace I can accomplish much. I depend on you for help. Stay with me when I come close to temptation. Stand before me when I am weary, and be at my side when great things are asked of me. Walk with me and let me feel your presence when I need you most. For you are Lord for ever and ever. Amen. Father of all, I pray to you for those whom I will encounter this day. I pray for my family and friends and those with whom I normally work and those who rely on me. I pray for those in need, for the sick, the lonely and for those who feel unloved. I pray for those who are seeking work those with no roof over their heads, and those who are forced to be refugees. I pray for those who are in government, those who make and dispense laws, and those who serve our public needs. As I pray for the world, and for all that is dear to you, I join my prayers with those of your saints, and in the words of your Son, I call upon you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lord of the morning, I bless you for being my God. In your goodness, return your blessing upon me during this new day which you have made, that I may serve you as you deserve and come to know your mercy. May I heed the promptings of your spirit, recognize your son in those I meet, and be a witness to your glory today and forevermore. I ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well now, I um, hope that those prayers may be of some comfort and inspiration for you today. Next Wednesday morning won't be um, talks and prayers as such, it'll be a May devotion to Our Lady, which all things being well, will be um, coming to you from inside the church building. And so I hope that you'll look forward to that. And then coming very soon, um, an evening service or more of a, a program than a service really with some hymns of summer and uh, some songs and uh, some thoughts. So um, please do look forward to um, those things if you're uh, struggling a little today and I look forward to speaking to you soon. One of the most important things um, is to keep in touch um, at the moment. Uh, there was a very um, eminent psychologist talking um, online the other day in, a, in what we uh, a sort of podcast um, and uh, she was talking uh, about a lot of different things but in the long and short of it appeared to be to, to appear to me to be that keeping in touch is very, very important uh, for us if we're isolated. And um, we probably don't need a psychologist to point that out. But nevertheless, um, it kind of reinforced, reinforced what uh, 
I, I've been thinking myself. So I don't know if you can see there's some, some um, I might just be able to see there's some uh, um, um, geraniums, I couldn't, remember, I couldn't remember the name of them, geraniums here, big, there's some beautiful geraniums. Um, now some of the geraniums in the garden I, uh, I um, dried out and, and stored away um, so that they didn't get killed by the frost. And um, when I took those out of um, storage a few months ago, they were dead as a doornail. And uh, <clears throat> there was nothing, nothing, uh, nothing further to be seen out of them. But the ones I've left in the ground here, um, they're really looking uh, absolutely super. So it just goes to show. I know a lot of people uh, are starting to um, do some gardening um, this summer. And I think that's a wonderful thing. And I hope that uh, continues. Anyway, enough, enough of my um, chattering. Let's have a special blessing for the day ahead. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and those whom you love both this day and forevermore. Amen.